Got a box of plants. That's always exciting. I was <laughs> actually fairly concerned because I paid to have this overnight shipped and it's been, it said it was on the truck all day. It just showed up a few minutes ago. It's about 8.45 at night, which is also convenient because it's kind it's cooled off. Not really a little bit. I can at least get out here with the camera. There are gonna be some shadows and everything, but just gonna go with it because during the day, it's too hot. I was looking at the temperatures that come through on the sensors. It maxed out on the patio. So here, right underneath the umbrella in this area at 118 degrees. Now that's, of course, surrounded by pavement. The sensor sits in the shade, but the whole entire patio, I mean, it's a lot of dark pavement. So very, very, very warm when the sun is out. As soon as the sun goes away, it gets a lot better. And you walk, you know, 10 feet away into the grass, and it drops about 10 or 15 degrees and feels a lot better. Anyways, what I have here is a package from Norman's. These are orchids. There's some orchids I'm pretty excited about. And I don't talk about the orchids that much on the channel. Not as much as I used to. That's because I really don't get orchids that often anymore unless it's something that I just absolutely love. And there's an orchid in here that I am very excited about. That's a lot of packing peanuts. What's, why do we use packing peanuts? They're so messy. I am very gently unearth the plant from in here. Everything I ordered said that it would be in spike. At least it should be because I paid extra for that option. I went ahead and upgraded the orchids to whatever their premium option was just because like I said I don't get orchids very often anymore so I figure it's okay to go ahead and spend more on them. Back in the day I was once overrun by orchids because I would pick up absolutely any in every orchid I could find but I don't do that anymore. And I do see a spike in here. The spike is what the flower comes out of. And I'm just trying to very carefully pull things back. Maybe I should grab a baggie, something to put these packing peanuts in. I'm gonna look for one. It seems like a good idea to go ahead and just at least get a few handfuls of these things out of here. Don't want packing peanuts flying around, especially when there's a puppy who will snatch these up and chew them up in a heartbeat and you know, bad for the environment. I do save these though for the rare occasions that I have a planter that's really deep and like inappropriately deep. Turbo, that, that was the dog chewing on the tripod. I'll use these sometimes for drainage. I'll put them in hanging baskets if I need to lighten them up. Threw a bunch of packing peanuts in it to help reduce the amount of soil that the planter needed. I know that that's kind of a hot topic because of raising the saturation line for plants, but it's that if you just don't overwater, it's not that big of a deal. And of course, it depends on the plant, right? Anything that's going to be really sensitive to having the roots wet for too long. Probably not a good idea to do that with Turbo. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, I see a flower, but you see that? See that cute little flower petal sticking out from in there? That's why I'm oh, almost just broke one, too. That's why I'm going about this very slowly, because the flowers on here don't actually seem to be pretty protected at all in any way shape or form they're not wrapped up in anything i don't want to break them sometimes wrapping them up doesn't always work sometimes it just makes them more weak and they still break i've unfortunately broken multiple flowers on orchids that have come in the mail before because of just not thinking not even realizing that it might be in flower when they send it and then getting really excited and opening up the box and snap that is always upsetting and not something i want to repeat i think i maybe have enough of these out to where I should be able to get these plants out of here without doing any damage to them. Okay, let's get on to pulling the plants out. I don't know how much fun was that watching me pull packing peanuts out of a box. And the first one I'm seeing there is the main reason that I placed this order. So maybe I'll go with that one last. Nah, go ahead and just pull it out of there right now. All right, so here's orchid number one. You get a closer look, I'm gonna get the rest of them out. Oh, I'm gonna need to set that into a heavier container. I can tell that's gonna fall right over. Oh, oh look at those flowers. Got a whole bunch of blooms on it. Stop. Turbo, no, no, Turbo, no. He's been getting a lot better about realizing that he's supposed to only chew on his toys, but he is at that age where he always has to have something in his mouth. I just gave him some fresh toys. You, know, you want to rotate them so that they don't get bored with them. He doesn't really work with Turbo. He doesn't really care. He's just like, yeah, I just always have to have anything in my mouth, preferably something that I'm not supposed to. <laughs> don't bark at me. Oh. Lots of tape on this one. All right, I'm gonna set these out where they'll be easier to see. And I think I need to get a larger pot for one of them because it's just gonna fall over. Okay. Oh, that's pretty. This was sitting in 
the dark. I have all those pots that I'm working on getting sorted out. And I just reached over and grabbed one that I saw holes in. So the first one of these orchids is a Zygopetalum. And this one's called Jumpin' Jack. It's a variety that I have always wanted and I've never been able to find. It's a really common variety too. So it's odd that I've never been able to find it. Prior to this, I had the Starburst Parkside, which was a fantastic orchid, usually bloomed for me two to three times a year. It was highly fragrant. The flowers were pretty, but it was one of those plants that just didn't survive last summer. A lot of the orchids didn't make it through having other people take care of them, which is okay. I was never upset about it, never complained about it. I was just happy to have people helping me. So this is my replacement for that plant. I like the Jumpin' Jack because it has a, a more vivid green and a more striking purple. Some of the varieties, like there's one called like Aussie Blue or Australian something, that's become really common, but the flowers on it are kind of, just not for me. They just don't have a lot going on. There's not a lot of variation in colors, just kind of purple and brown. So that's just a replacement orchid. Then the next one is a Wilsonaria back here. Oh, I didn't show you the tag for the Zygopetalum. Hopefully I had it up on the screen. If not, then I will have typed it in there. And the next one, Wilsonaria Firecat Jamaican Sunset. This is a smaller <laughs> Wilsonaria, which I think are Catatontes now. I enjoy Wilsonarias. I think that they're a fun orchid to grow because they usually are reliable bloomers for me anyways. I usually have good luck with getting them to flower a couple times a year. That probably would look better without that in the background, wouldn't it? This particular one is supposed to have, a, well, actually you can see it just looking at it. It has a more stout growth habit and a shorter spikes on them. A lot of them will have longer spikes and uh, longer leaves that come off of the pseudobulbs down here. So a larger, more elongated pseudobulb with longer leaves. Looks like a healthy enough plant. It's got lots of flowers on it. And I absolutely love the colors on these flowers. They're just orange and yellow. They definitely looked more vivid in the pictures, but that's unfortunately just how online shopping goes sometimes, right? I was hoping for something slightly more vibrant, but I like this. I think that that's nice. Not the largest plant, but typically these will grow fast enough that that doesn't matter. This time next year, there'll be double the amount of pseudobulbs down there inside that pot and hopefully even more flowers than this. Okay, we can move on to the last one. Oh, this is a lot of fun to look at. I'm enjoying seeing this at nighttime. I was apprehensive about doing this at night, but it just wasn't looking like there was going to be a more opportune time to really get out here and film. So I figured, why not? Gave the lens half an hour to defog on the table and said, whatever, let's just go with it. And then here is the main reason that I placed the order. This is Phalaenopsis Yang Yang Blueberry Heaven Scent. So I saw this orchid while watching a live stream from uh, Terry Moore's channel. Get down, Turbo, get down. Dog was jumping up on the chair trying to get into the table. He was showing his Phalaenopsis orchids. It's TD more than just orchids as his channel. I'll link it here so you can see his channel and I'll put the actual link down below. He is a fantastic source for orchids. There are a lot of amazing orchid channels out there. If you have an orchid channel, comment down below so people can go and check them out. But, but just put the name of your channel. If you actually put the link, it might go to spam and nobody will be able to see it. When he showed this orchid, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have that. The growth form on it, it has that really beautiful, what you would more see naturally with a Phalaenopsis orchid and the foliage is a really nice, pretty, glossy green. Very, very glossy. The plant itself will get large. This is going to have a very wide span on it as it grows. It should, I would imagine, probably be out to like somewhere in here. It's, I think there's some Gigantia in the DNA of this one, is there? The tag says it's Yang Yang New Scent Cross with Violacea Indigo, which is a species orchid that has a purpley flower on it. But I don't know what Yang Yang Nusar has in it. That might have some Gigantia. I don't know, but I can see some Violacea in the flowers and the behavior of the spike, which is what I'll talk about next. I'm really into the foliage on this plant. That's a thing with orchids. There seems to be a common perception they need to stay in flower in order to be enjoyable. And I'm hoping that that's something that with this houseplant craze and trend that's going on with just lots of big leaved plants in the home that maybe orchids will start to gain some more mainstream popularity in the sense that they do oftentimes just look nice to have around. They're fun looking plants. They don't have to be in flower 
in order to be appreciated and to be enjoyed. Let's have a look at that flower. See it? Isn't that gorgeous? And this is, the camera's not really doing it justice. It is a lighter purple than this. It is fragrant. It smells quite nice. It's a sweet smell. Hey camera, pick up the flowers. The way the flowering will work on here is that as long as the humidity stays up high enough and then the spike right here stays green, then it will potentially continue to put out new flowers down around or down along. Hello camera. Down along this stem here. And this still has a lot of buds to open up. Once these are done and they fade, it will continue to keep opening up flowers down along that end. So it may not be that giant show that we get from a lot of the hyper-produced fowls that you see at the big box stores. There's gonna be more reliable, or I guess I should say more long-lasting, more longevity as far as just getting the flowers to keep going on there. And it is a multi-floral spike. So there's one spike coming up out of the plant and then it has three branches coming off of it. And it could potentially even send up more spikes at some point and then would have even more flowers that would continue on it. There it is, Yang Yang Blueberry. Isn't that an awesome name? Like it just makes me smile just saying Yang Yang Blueberry. <laughs> it's very pretty, smells fantastic. And that foliage, just the plant itself, really cool looking. I'm looking forward to having this for a long time, watching it grow and just get bigger and bigger and start to move forward out of the pot and flop and just look all fun, wild natural and jungly. That's gonna be really neat. Clearly it's the next day. I thought it would be uh, the most fair and honest to also make sure that I show these during the daytime where the lighting's going to be a bit more accurate. You can see the details better on these. And I also wanted to pull up the actual description from orchids.com where I ordered these from and be able to give some more accurate details with the plant. So I'm actually, I was thinking I would just read off what they say about this plant and it's a lot. Their description is just, it's so much better than anything I can say about the plant. So here it is. We're thrilled to offer this exclusive limited tissue culture propagation foul Yang Yang Blueberry, which was sold out quickly when we first introduced this remarkable blue phalaenopsis from the Mr. Yang Yang of Prince Orchids in 2018. Mr. Yang is an outstanding hybridizer in Taiwan, producing countless fabulous, awe-inspiring novelty Phalaenopsis hybrids. His most popular and sensational hybrids include Fal Yang Yang Blue Dragonfly and Fal Yang Yang Blueberry. His use of Fal Gigantia, okay, Alba Prince in breeding is groundbreaking. You can't go wrong with any of his crosses. Mr. Yang agreed to do some of his limited tissue culture for us. And we're offering them in bigger four inch pot with 11 to 13 and three quarter inch leaf spans. The plants are exhibiting amazing hybrid vigor. And then it goes on to talk about the parentage. Fal Yang Yang New Star is a hybrid of Fal Tetrapsis and Speciosa. And with addition of the pollen parent Fal Violacea Indigo, its heavenly fragrance is coming from all three of its immediate species background. The clone heavenly scent was selected and amazingly fragrant. The plant produces multitudes of long lasting waxy blue flowers on tall branching inflorescences. It has multiple spike habit with previously flowered spikes remaining green to continue to add buds and flowers in addition to new spikes. If the spikes remain green, do not remove them since they'll continue to add buds and flower in addition to creating new inflorescences. Excellent for, for growing on a bright windowsill and under lights, amazing fragrance, yeah, okay. Oh, they use hashtags. How fancy of them. That did get a little bit stuttery, sorry. The, this guy over here, he's a big distraction if you can't tell. It's calming down as soon as I'm gonna show him, but while I was reading that, he was over here trying to chew on the tripod. I thought that that description laid it out better than anything I could say, you know, as far as I was concerned, I was just like, oh, it's shiny and the flowers smell nice, and they're a really pretty shade of purple and they smell great. What's not to love about that? And then I talked about how it's going to have that nice, wide, floppy habit to it, which I just love. I think that that's going to be beautiful. I'm really loving this orchid. Glad that I got it. And with the heat that we're having, I'm not leaving these out here. I left them out overnight, so it's nice and humid. I gave them a very light drink this morning. Well, it is this morning, it's very early. Have to get out here before the heat kicks in. The camera overheats within a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna take these inside over the next few days because we're in the upper 90s, heat index is well into the hundreds. And as I told you, like it's kind of like sitting in a parking lot out here with all this pavement. It's just too hot for the orchids. Actually, I have some cattleyas and some other orchids that are over in this area down here that I need to 
either tuck way back into the shade or probably move in because I worry that they will cook and scorch. So there it is. There's the orchids. Looking pretty. I think my lens is starting to fog up again, which I don't understand because I just spent forever waiting for it to defog. It's a better look at that zygopetalum. Nice, healthy pseudobulbs. That's what these are called down here. These are pseudobulbs. They're nice and plump and firm. They'll continue to put out more of these and they'll put up those fun flower spikes. Can't wait for that. And then here's a look at the well scenario in the daylight. Still kind of hard to get a grasp on it because it's so humid out here. I just can't seem to get the fog off of the sensor in the camera. So probably time to wrap it up. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, a great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. Comment down below. I love talking to everybody. Say hi to some of your favorite orchids. Orchids for beginners. Are you an aeroid grower who is intermingling orchids into your like Ikea greenhouses? That was another thing that I just, I see all these beautiful displaced people having their homes to grow their aeroids. And I like always think to myself, why are we not we incorporate some orchids into that? That would look so nice and so many orchids would grow really really well in those setups with those other plants you can just stick them right to the back of those walls that they have in those setups those glass cabinets and they would just grow and do their thing and look beautiful but i don't know teaches their own maybe just not aware it's something to talk about i'm excited about the new plants they're pretty, especially can't wait to get some more growth out of the Zygo. Oh, and I had mentioned that I ordered all these in Spike. I meant that the ones that were optional to have in Spike, that was these two right here. The Zygo wasn't supposed to be in Spike when I ordered it. The whole scenario here is all right. This is the only one where I was like, eh, I don't know if I needed to order that one. But I'll hold on to it for probably a year or two, see how I like it, see how much vigor it has in its growth. And you know, if I love it, I'll keep it. And, if not, then you give it away. You just don't know until you try with some of them. But the Phalaenopsis Yang Yang Blueberry, that's a winner. I love this one. So fun and pretty. I love. I know I said it too many times. The foliage is awesome. You get it. Oh, and there was no intro to this video because I had filmed it as being the ending to the vlog that comes out on Saturday. It was too hot to get a video filmed for Wednesday. And I decided to just cut that out, make it its own video. Because I don't do the orchid stuff that often. So for those of you who miss the orchid videos, here's something for y'all. And uh, the, hopefully in the vlog, get to see the orchids in the house or whatever I end up doing. Well, that's not going to be that exciting. Let's going to take them inside. All right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.